Okay, one of the things I want to do is talk to you about sewing machines. I've been getting questions about what type of sewing machine uh, to use. You know, there are people that would tell you uh, that you can use, you know, just by any type of sewing machine to work with leather. They would tell you you can use these little home machines to work with leather. Well, you you can, but what will happen is that eventually your motor will, will give out. And if you uh, if you look at it this way, the motor for this machine is inside of this housing. So which means that this housing is only about six inches wide. So that motor happens. It, it it's no bigger than this so it it's like you could you could you know they'll tell you to get a a uh, leather needle and you can uh sew leather on, on this sewing machine the problem is is that you can do that but eventually it's like taking a motorcycle and pulling a boat you can pull a boat with a motorcycle, but at some point your motor would just give out. And that's why you don't want to try and use these uh, just regular home machines to, to sew leather. Uh, I'm going to show you some, some other machines uh, that uh, people will tell you that you can use, but I'm going to also show you the type of machine that you need to have if you want to work with leather and be able to produce with, with beautiful stitches. I mean, you can you can sew leather with different types of machine, but but the the quality of your stitch will have a lot to do with the uh, type of machine that you're using. And I'll show you a couple more. Okay, this is one of the other type of machines people will tell you to get and to use. Um, I mean, it's made of metal. It's it's an old machine. There's a lot of these around. Uh, they are very heavy duty, but they're really not built for leather. Uh, but if if it's all you have, you know what? That's what you use. But what you want to do is is work towards uh, a walking foot uh, industrial sewing machine. So. When, when people are telling you to get an old uh, portable machine like this, they're nice, they're cute, but working with leather is, is not, this is not the machine. I mean, it's the same as the other one, and I'll kind of show you what I'm talking about when I'm talking about the motor. This is the motor for this machine. I mean, yeah, it, it can work, but I'll, I, I'll tell you, it would not last. So, uh, this is just another myth. So, this is not a machine to use for working with leather. Now, this is another machine. This is a, a portable walking foot. That is one of the terms you will hear me uh, continue to, to say, and that is, walking foot you you really want a machine that is a walking foot now this is a portable walking foot now this is what I started with and I mean they're okay the stitches are not that that beautiful but the problem is is that for what they sell these machines for you can buy you a used in, industrial walking foot uh, these machines, I've seen them on the market now for like $600. I think I may have paid $300 for this one. They do have them. Uh, it have a, they have zigzag. This is an older model. They have a, a newer version. And uh, like I said, I think they're around six or $700. But you can find a used industrial walking foot around eight nine hundred dollars and and again I'm going to show you the motor this is the key to all of this it has this small motor now some people use this machine what they will do is that they will take this motor off and use a larger motor 
But these machines are people that works with, um, that repair uh, sails for sailboats. This is what they, they use because they're able to take this on location and to be able to do the repair. Uh, but for, uh, for doing leather work, like I say, if, if this is all you have, you know, this is good to start with. I started with this, but when I look at the stitches uh, from the work that I did with this compared to stitches that on the industrial walking foot day and night, just, just totally, totally different. Okay, now we're going to go to the next machine. Now, this is a industrial sewing machine. This one is called a straight stitch. It's not a walking foot, it's called a straight stitch. This is okay if you're working with fabric, but working with leather, I mean, you can use it. This was the, this was the first industrial uh, sewing machine that I bought that's mounted in a table. I did not know any better. If I would have known better, I would not have purchased this. I would have started off with a walking foot because I had to end up buying a walking foot. So I have sort of gone through this, this uh, process of buying whatever I knew to buy. You know, I, I had nobody to tell me or to show me and this like i say now this was okay the stitches was okay but they they're not a beautiful stitch they can be very very uh they're very close to each other it, it's 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 really for fabric and the foot just to kind of give you an idea about the different in, in the foot on this machine and the foot on the uh, walking foot with this machine the needle goes up and down and the foot do not move it it it's just stays in place i'll kind of show you what i'm talking about let me change leather from um from this brown to a black uh, and that way you can see the stitch much much better now uh one of the things that i want to show you about the straight stitch um comparing the straight stitch to the walking foot uh, machine. Now, what I will do is I will make a stitch with the straight stitch. Now this leather here, this leather is, oh, like two, probably two and five eighths um, ounce. Now, which is it's, it's, it's kind of thick, but it's really not thick compared to what you may be doing. So, if you're sewing just, just a single piece of this leather, this machine will do just fine. I'm just going to kind of show you the, the stitch. Now, if you notice this, this foot, it's not going up and down, it's it's just staying in place. And, and I'll show you the difference between using this and the walking foot. Now the other thing is that with this machine, the stitch, if you look at the stitch, the stitch is very close together. This is the wider, point of the stitch. You cannot make the stitch any wider than it is right here. And if you look at this stitch, this stitch is from a, a walking foot. It is much wider than this one here. This machine is okay if you're doing fabric or you're, you're sewing some leather and this is about the thickest that you're going to sew it. So if I try to sew, now this, this leather here, this leather is, matter of fact, it, this, is, this is even thinner, this is only two ounces. But if I took this and I folded this, 
let's, I tell you what, let's take this one here and fold it. If I take this and fold it, I'm going to have more problems because the foot is not really putting it in the pressure on the leather. What, what you need is, you need a, a foot that's going to keep pressure on the leather while you're sewing. So, I'm going to take it over to a walking foot. Now, if you look at this stitch now, see how, how small this stitch is compared to the first one that I stitched? Because the, the uh, foot is, is not putting any pressure on the leather, it's causing the, the stitches to be very close. So a single stitch, I mean not a single stitch, but a straight stitch uh, industrial sewing machine is really not good for working with leather. And I'm going to take you over to the walking foot and show you the difference in using a walking foot and using this straight stitch machine. Now, uh, now these, the two machines that you're seeing here, these are the two machines that we use the most. Uh, I consider these as our workhorses. And these are the walking foot. And I'll show you the difference between the walking foot and the, the, the straight stitch machine that we just looked at. Uh, let me show you the difference between the, the uh, the foot on each one of them. Now, um, this is the walking foot uh, industrial sewing machine. A and I want to show you the difference between the uh, walking foot and the straight stitch. Now, first thing I'm going to show you is the difference between the foot on the uh, walking foot and the straight stitch. Now, this is the uh, foot for the straight stitch. If you notice, it's just it's just one piece. Now, if you look at the the foot for the walking foot, it's two pieces. I'll take this off just to kind of show you. You have one piece, and then you have the second piece so you have two pieces there and and the reason for that see if I can set this up the reason for that is that this part of the uh, foot what it does it keeps pressure when you're sewing it keeps pressure on the leather while this one here is the one that, that goes up and down. So that's the difference between the walking foot and the, um, the uh, straight stitch. And uh, you remember on, on the other one, when I was sewing this, the straight stitch, once I folded the leather, the straight stitch, uh, stitch became very very narrow compared to when it was just a, a single just a single piece of leather now I'm going to sew with the industrial um, walking foot to show you the different when you're doing a single piece of leather or when you double it or even triple it so let me show you what that's like okay I'm going to put um, the foot back on and show you how this machine perform compared to the straight stitch machine this machine I love it um, it it produced such beautiful work when it comes to stitches and when you are showing people your work that's one of the things they're going to be looking at. They're going to be looking at your stitch work. You and the machine working as a partner would have a lot to do with 
the quality of the look of your stitch and just kind of give you an idea this is this is the, the uh, stitch work of this machine here it's just it's, it's beautiful I mean it it will just give your product such a quality look so I'm going to show you how this one perform I'm going to use the uh, uh, black um, leather again so you can see the, the uh, stitch much better now this is just the, the single fold leather and again now it, it measure at uh, one and a half inch uh, well not one and a half inch one and a half ounce I don't know why on the other one it it, it was over um, two ounces that's interesting but anyway um, let me show you how this, this machine performed this is just a single okay that's what that stitch looks like it's a, it's a long stitch it's beautiful now the next thing we're going to do we're going to fold the leather we're going to fold it and see what the stitch looked like now see what happened here this this part of the foot right here this part of the foot is putting pressure on the leather let's turn it this way so we can see it as it presses it down bring it over Now if you notice, the stitch never changed, but on the uh, straight stitch machine, when we, when we doubled the uh, leather, the stitch got, got more narrow, but the stitch never, never changed, and, and it's because of that, that foot there. That makes such a big difference when you are sewing and you're trying to get a, a quality uh, uh, finish. Okay, now I will take you to the next step. Now, the, the one thing I want to do is show you the difference between the two walking foot machines that we have. And the big difference is the motor. Uh, this one here have a AC motor and the other one have a DC motor which is the DC motor is just like a battery operated motor. Uh, it's, it's not actually operated by a battery, but it, I mean, it plugs in, in, into the, uh, into the uh, circuit, but it's converted to a, a DC current, which, which means that it's, it's, just, it's just like a battery. So when you, when you turn it on, you don't even hear it, when you when you uh, uh, you can also adjust the speed on it. It have a regulator, but this one here, this one here, it doesn't have a regulator. You have to regulate it by the pressure of your foot and by turning uh, this this wheel over here. And I'll show you what I'm talking about now. This one here, when you turn it on, you can hear it. When you turn it off, the the motor is still spinning. The DC motor, when you when you turn it off, it's off. I mean, it just stops. It's like uh, electric car. When you when you're driving it, and when you come off off the uh, accelerator, it just stops. And this one here keeps turning. So the difference is when you mash on it there's no regulator you have to regulate so if you mash too mash on the, the pedal too too far it can just take off but the beauty to it is that 
you will learn to control the speed of it. And what I always tell people is that you control the machine, the machine do not control you. I mean, and it just gives such a, a beautiful, beautiful stitch. Now what I'll do is that uh, I will show you the other walking foot and the difference between the two motors. Now, the other thing that I want to show you is the motor on, on this machine. This is the DC motor. And on the other smaller machines that I was showing you, the size of their motor, look at the size of this motor. I mean, that is so much bigger. It has so much more torque. This is why you're able to, to sew leather and uh, thick material. And like I say, this will last you a lifetime. And uh, this is this is a workhorse, you know. This is this is my choice, but I'm going to also show you the uh, DC motor, um, and, and you can see that the different in the way it's it's built. It's for sizes, but this one will last your lifetime. Now, th this is the other uh, w walking foot that we have. And this one was built, I think, in like in 1960, early 60s, and they still sell this. And this machine here, I bought this machine for $900. I think it's still on the market for about $1,600 if you buy it brand new. But if you can find it used, uh, it is a great machine. Uh, I use this when I have something that's really heavy duty. I like the other one because it maneuvers much better. Uh, I mean, I could do the same thing with this one, but I just have gotten used to the other one because that was the first walking foot that I, I purchased. But this machine here, uh, it is a great machine. And this is the one that have the DC motor on it. And I'm going to show you that motor and I'll turn it on and you will not hear anything from that motor. I mean, it's, you don't hear anything, uh, but the reason why I had the DC motor put on this machine is because I teach classes, and sometimes for some students, uh, I have to have a motor that I can regulate just to get them uh, used to using the motor to where they're, they're not afraid, and then I move them on to the other motor. But uh, uh, this is a great uh, sewing machine here. Now let me show you the motor. Now this is this is the motor for the uh, for the second machine that I was just showing you. And, and if you notice how how uh, much narrower and longer that that this motor is. Now this one have a regulator, which is this little knob here. I can adjust it. I can adjust the speed to where it's very slow or it's very fast. And um, and if you look at this motor and you take a look at the first motor that I showed you, this one here, like I say, I really don't think we'll get 15 years out of this motor. I could be wrong, but I, I really don't think so. Uh, the other one, I know those last for years and years and years. Um, and I'll, I'll show you just how this, this regulator works so you can kind of see the difference in it. Like I say, some people like it, and, and it's because of just a fear, you know, being afraid of, of uh, uh, getting used to the other motor, but I think it's, it's, it's better practice to be able to use that first motor that I showed you, because in that way, you learn to use that motor, you can use any motor. It, but if you, you know, get stuck on something like this and be intimidated by the one that you have to control, you will always be intimidated. And the key is, is to not to be intimidated by any machine because you control it. It, it doesn't control you. So let me show you how this, this motor works. Now, one of the things I want to show you about this machine here, if you get a machine like this, uh, this machine here, when you start to sew, one of the things that you have to do is that you have to pull the thread to the back and do 
you pull the thread to the back, but you need to be able to hold it. Let this down. You need to be able to hold the two threads to the back and do you a couple of stitches before you start sewing. Because if not, what will happen is that the thread will get tangled up. So what we have done, we have taken a clip. We have a clip here, we have a rubber band on it, and it's attached to this, to this light pole. And we take this clip, because you only have two hands, you don't have three hands, so we just take the clip and use the clip to hold the thread for us. So now we can, we can get started sewing. So you want to do, you want to do your least, okay, I'm going to turn this motor on, nothing, you don't hear anything, but now what I'm going to do, I'm going to adjust the speed and show you how, how that work while I'm adjusting the speed. Now what I'm going to do, that, that, um, that knob that I showed you underneath here, I'm going to adjust it. I'm going to turn it all the way down. So right now it's turned all the way down and my foot, my foot is, is have the, the pedal press all the way down. Now I'm just going to slowly start to turn that knob. See, I can, I can run it that, that slow. And, and I'll push all the way down. So no matter how far I push down on, on the pedal, it's not going to go any faster. Now I can adjust that. See, I can adjust that. So that's the difference between this machine and the other one is that this one have a regulator on the motor and, the, and this motor is a DC. If you, if, you, uh, if you leave it on all night, it's not going to, to harm it. Uh, the other one, if you leave it on, you know, and you do, if you keep doing that, you're going to wear out your machine. I mean, wear out your, your motor. This one, you don't have to worry about that, but this motor, I just don't think it'll last longer than 10 or 15 years. Like I said, I could be wrong. I don't know, but, uh, but anyway, thank you for watching. I, I hope this, this, this video was uh, some help to you. It did answer some questions for you. And uh, I know I was not able to answer all of your questions, and I know there's some things that I was not able to cover, but I will be doing another video on the machines, actually showing you how to sew and how to master your machine. You know, there's a lot of people, uh, they will show you how to use a machine, but really not how to use a machine. I mean, there's, I had my machine for four years and I was afraid to adjust the tension. And it's because I did not understand it. I didn't know why uh, a tension uh, knob was there, and how to use it, or even when to use it. So those are some of the things that I will also cover in the future. And again, uh, send us a comment, subscribe, share it with someone else. And one thing I always try to tell people is push for quality. That is what they're going to remember you by, is the quality of your work. And don't be afraid of sharing with somebody else. So thank you again for watching.